Before long, we were the talk of the neighborhood. Some believed we were building a steel sculpture. Perhaps a dinosaur or an insect, they said. I agree a bit on the dinosaur, I guess. <laughs> you see, we were so far away from the ocean in rural Alberta that most people have never seen a sailboat before, let alone one being constructed out of steel. We decided to take a day off and build a gantry for the chain hoist. Some heavy lifting is on the horizon and this will make things a lot easier. The next part of the project is to add in some half stations. These are frames that only go up to the sole line, not up the sides. But to our dismay, the mere action of welding them onto the braces was causing the braces to flex inward, thus lowering the frames. Unfortunately, we didn't notice until several were in place. Luckily, we had Gina's amazing flat bar bender and were able to straighten them all out. The next morning started out a little rough, but we were determined to start serving up some stringers. No, I don't mean spaghetti for dinner. Stringers are like little subframes that run from forward to aft. They attach to the frames via slots, but are left to stand proud. This keeps the hull plate off of the frame and prevents the starved cow look. The stringers will cover the entire hull except along the keel where looks aren't as important. Now it's time to cut some slots. 182 slots later, we could start to snap the stringers into place. Now the hull has built-in ladders, making it easy to climb up. Now spring has arrived, those bow gussets can be installed. This will stiffen up the bow cone and perhaps add strength if we ever hit anything with the boat. Finally, after a long delay, the radius plate has arrived. The first two pieces to be served up are near the bow. The 10 foot pieces were cut to match the amount of radius frame on the boat. Anything that is curved becomes very rigid and just doesn't like to bend any other way. We read that splitting the plate makes curving a curve both ways easier, so after trying everything else we gave in to the methods of those who know. And it worked! Now it's time to plate the sides and the bottom. It's important that the flat plate comes into the round softly, so some excess was removed. Putting on the flat plate is a matter of serving it up, marking the joints from behind and then cutting to fit. Sounds pretty easy, but the first plate is some 24 feet long and weighs 800 pounds. Try to stay out from under it, she says, but I think it wouldn't matter where I was standing if that puppy fell. It flopped over like a giant piece of pasta and almost got stuck between a rock and the hull. This plate was much easier on the nerves. To get around the keel, I used a technique called battening. Holding a ruler parallel to the edge to be cut around, a line is marked. It's important that the ruler stays at a right angle all along. The quarter inch keel plate is a little thicker than the 3 16th inch hull plate and needs to come in flush with the pipe at the forward edge of the keel. After testing the cut was made with the plate hauled up into position, now things are looking really cool from the street. Winter is almost here, so we'll try to weld and smooth as much as possible before the snow falls. The keel to haul joints seem to be a priority. Join us in episode 3 where we finish welding up the hull, check all the welds, grind everything smooth, fight awful weather, and turn the boat over. We'll find the transom is a little different than we envisioned, and how big this boat really is. I'm Sandra Sims. Fair winds until next time. <laughs>